Got questions, you want to shoot me an email or call me up at any time. Uh, that's what my job is, to help you grow canola. Obviously calibration is very critical in canola with the small seeds. A planting date, obviously canola or no-till systems usually have a, a lower soil temperature. You want to start to look at different varieties. There are some that do a little bit better in no-till than conventional till. Planting depth is very critical in no-till to get that good seed to soil contact. Start looking at different row spacings with different equipment we're starting to look at to use and obviously different planting equipment. Residue distributed out of the combine very evenly is very beneficial in canola. So, so make sure you have the correct meter assembly for the planter you have and also you want to double check your weighing scale. Uh, try to shy on the early side for no-till instead of later just to get make sure you have the crop established. We saw about a 10 degrees Fahrenheit difference from uh, no residue to heavy residue. Lower soil temp is very uh, influential in getting it to stand the way you want it before it starts to freeze. The variety selection is very critical. You want to try to get as much data as you can from your seed companies. So try to get it firm but without overdoing it. But you don't want an open furrow because it might have the opportunity to freeze out throughout the fall and winter. So I like to plant a little bit deeper than I would in conventional till. This set of data, we did a trial looking at different planting speed. This last column on, we wanted eight plants per square foot. So at five mile an hour, we're at 100%. So we speeded up two mile an hour, up to seven miles an hour. We cut our seeding rate by almost 40%. Five different treatments, conventional till, no-till where we burn the residue off right before planting. Uh, just a typical no-till, no-till worth twice as much residue and no-till with no residue. So residue management is still going to be one of our critical factors in no-till. I haven't really seen much of a problem with soil crusting in no-till unless you don't have hardly any residue cover or if you do have soils that are typically prone to crust. Well, no-till fields where you have a thick thatch or residue layer, the plant will put that crown on top of the residue and obviously the further away you get that crown from the soil, the more prone it is to freezing and thawing and eventually a lot of times they'll kill out over the winter. So planting too thick, having too many plants out there will elongate the crown and you'll have the same results of freezing and thawing. But the main factor we're looking at is residue management. Trying to get the residue out of the seed furrow. You can cut the straw and that wavy culture will help push that straw out a little bit and give you a little bit cleaner seed furrow. A lot of guys are starting to run like their 1890s with the 90 series openers and stuff like that. That is great for depth control, but with some of the older ones, older crust brushes I have seen, they do start to grind up the seed a little bit, so do double check on your drills, whatever type it is. Make sure you're not just crushing the seed. If you start seeing yellow coming out of there, you know there's a problem.